So if you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll know that I made this, which is my Z80 Playground, or Z80 Playground, I suppose you could call it, um, a single board computer um, based around the Z80 processor, which is sitting at the top here, an 8-bit single board computer. And this was version 1.0, which I made a few months ago, and it had a few problems with it, so I've replaced it with this. So this is the version 1.1 of the Z80 Playground, and uh, it's pretty similar to the 1.0, but I've improved on a few features. So let me just get, walk you through the board and what the new features are. So first of all, up the top of the board, we have got the Z80 chip itself. Let's see if we can get... Uh, can you get that? Yep, you can see that, I think. There's Zilog Z80 at the top there. And that is the heart of the single board computer. And it's driven by this 4 megahertz clock sitting just here. Um, and powered by a 5 volt power supply, which could be coming from either here or from plugged into the side here. That has access to 64K of RAM, which is what this chip is here. It's a 64K RAM chip, and also 16K of ROM, uh, which is in this EEPROM here. The EEPROM, uh, the main improvement from the version 1.0, or one of the main improvements from version 1.0, is that the ROM is sensibly sitting in a ZIF socket. Uh, so you can take that out and program that up quite easily. The second big chip on here is the UART, so that's the serial interface chip. That's a 16C550CN, and that's a pretty standard UART chip, um, but I've only used kind of the basic features of that thing. It's, um, but it's pretty good. It's pretty easy to work with, very reliable UART, and I'm able to use it at quite a high board rate. So the board rate that I'm using, based on this crystal here, 460,800 board. So that's, um, I think the fastest that that chip can probably work out and it's, it's certainly as fast as you'd ever need to go in a UART, I think. The UART comes through to here, so we're talking um, an FTDI connection to that. So it's not a standard serial port, a 12, plus and 12, minus 12 volt serial port, but it's a plus five volt serial port that you plug an FTDI adapter into. In fact, let's do that now. Yep, so here we are. Here's the FTDI connector. That plugs into there. And the other end of that is a USB connector which plugs it into your PC. And that gets you a serial connection. So you can open up a serial window on your PC and be able to communicate with this thing, see what this thing is saying, and also use the keyboard to send information to the single board computer. But the most interesting feature that I've added onto this board is hiding underneath. So under here we have a daughter board um, now, the main board I designed the circuit for, I got this PCB manufactured and soldered the components in, but this section here, this daughter board, is a module that I bought off eBay and soldered on, and it's a USB pen drive module, so it allows you to connect up a pen drive or a memory stick effectively, plug it into there and access that as um, access the files on that straight from the Z80. So let's plug one of those in. So here's an old pen drive that I had laying around. Uh, it's formatted under the FAT file system. I think that this module, the CH376 module that I've got on there, only handles certain formattings of pen drives. It certainly handles FAT, but I don't think it will handle the uh, absolute latest um, types of uh, disk formatting. So that plugs in there, plugs into that socket on the side there. And when that's plugged in, you can speak from the Z80 directly to that module, communicate with it and read and write files onto the pen drive, do directory listings, erase files, that kind of thing. And all the rest of the chips on here, so these uh, chips here, these are just glue logic just to um, do the address decoding and that sort of thing. I've got three, well, I've got a power on LED there, that's exciting, isn't it? And I've got three um, LEDs down here, one that shows if the Z80 is in halt mode, one shows if the ROM's enabled and one shows, well, one's a user light that you can just flash on and off. The ROM enable is quite interesting because what you can do is enable or disable that ROM. So you can run it in full 64K of RAM mode or you can have the ROM taking up some of the address space and the RAM taking up the rest. And I've got a couple of switches down here. One's a reset button and one is calls the non-maskable interrupt. So you can basically force an interrupt to happen by pressing that button there. So let's boot it up and let's see what we can get. Okay, so here we are. Um, I've got the UART plugged in. I've got the memory card plugged in. 
And if we press the reset button, um, I'm looking at, I've connected up to this through Terra term. So I'm on COM port 5 on my machine and I've got, I've set up the board rate correctly. So if we press reset, um, we see what the Z80 sends through. So this is my Z80 Playground monitor version 1.1 and I've got a bunch of commands that you can do in the menu um, and it's just showing us that the it's found the CH376 module and it can query the module to say what version have you got and we've got version 3 and it's looked for the pen drive and it's managed to connect to that correctly. So let's try out a few of the commands. Well the most important thing to look at is the memory map. Um, currently I've got it configured to have 16k of ROM overlaid over the top of the bottom 16k of RAM and then the rest of the space is RAM. Uh, by tweaking around with this connection, uh, with this jumper just here, you can make it a 32k. So if we reset that and look at the memory map again, we've got a 32k of RAM, 32k of ROM. And it's possible also to switch the ROM on and off, so if we put it to switched mode, um, switch the ROM off, the system itself will actually copy the memory. Um, so we've got to switch the ROM off first. Uh, so that's the ROM switched off. So the LED goes off for that. And then we should be able to view the memory map. Uh, there you go. So we've got, now we've got no ROM. We're only using RAM. The program's running from RAM. And I think at this point you can actually... I've copied the ROM. The, the monitor copies uh, the ROM down into the RAM. So if we take the ROM out, I think... Yeah, the program's still running, so we could view page zero. That's the contents of page zero. Um, and that's um, the, uh, the system running without any ROM in, so we're running purely off of RAM mode there. And obviously, we're going to use that for CPM. So let's just shove that back in. And I think most interestingly for running CPM is the access to the disk. So if we have a little look at this, and you can see here that it's managed to find the, um, the it's read sort of, there, there's a name stuck into the disk somewhere, Buffalo USB Flash Disk 3.0, and it's managed to connect up to that. I don't know where that's set, but it's somewhere stored in that uh, pen drive. I managed to do a directory listing, so there's a few files that are in the root directory of that pen drive. Um, and then in my file work.txt, there's some text which I've managed to load up and show on the screen. So it is possible to load, up, load stuff up, load files from the pen drive, save files to the pen drive. So I could now, going back to my Tiny Basic, which I looked at a little while ago, I could add some commands to Tiny Basic to be able to load and save basic files. So you could write a program and actually save it for a change rather than having to retype it every time. But even more interestingly than that, I reckon I should now be able to implement my poor man's Jupiter Ace, which I've wanted to do for a long time, and also get CPM running on this by implementing the CPM BIOS. So I'll be doing that over the next few videos.